um, quite a few. Um, embarrassingly, I've tried quite quite a few diets. Um, Weight Watchers. Been back to Weight Watchers more than once. Um, it's quite humiliating. I find that you know you you're talking about journeys and people are clapping and the, the scales come out and it's not very it's not very kind to to the people around you to to yourself. You know you're putting a, quite a lot of pressure on yourself. Um, I also work with someone who does Slimming World. And I see the benefits of Slimming World working for her, but for me, because I'm allowed certain foods freely, I find myself eating them to excess and not losing any weight. Um, and I understand that there's some foods, and I find myself absolutely, my mind runs away with that, that thought process, and I find myself absolutely stacking a plate full of food where you don't really need that amount of food. Um, so I understand it works for some people, but it's never particularly worked well for myself. Um, I struggle with the, the sin values, I struggle with the points values. Um, you know, no one ever buys half of a dairy milk, do they? And, and you know, you go and buy and put that back in the fridge at half. Um, I just don't think it's a, a reasonable situation um, to, to do that. I, you know, I'm the kind of person if I, if I have a curly whirly, I'm not going to stop halfway. I'm, not, I'm having a curly whirly and I want to be in a situation where I do make healthy food choices, I do control um, the size of the meals that I have, obviously life's for living and I'm not going to stop completely having a treat when it comes to, to birthdays in the office etc um, but realistically I need to make sacrifices in, around that so maybe I have a healthy breakfast or a healthy dinner after that time um, so you know, it's just about making those choices and training the brain to make those choices and make those choices and decisions based on on what's next. You know, like I say, not particularly not having anything that you don't want, but making adaptations later on in the diet. Um, I've also mentioned that um, I can be a little bit of a feeder. So I've got a reputation between family and friends that you know I will go to excess, I'll make plate sizes that are unrealistic, that resemble you know, mountain ranges, that people look at them and are off-put by the amount of food that I've, I've provided to them, um, often gasps when the kitchen door opens and I come out with, with a plate, um, but it, it does put people off and even to the point where it'll put me off and I look at the plate and I think, I'm not really sure I can eat that now, but I've peeled the vegetables, I've prepared this meal, I've made it this size, I want it, so I'm going to do my best to eat it. Um, I've already mentioned my little boy, um, he's nine, He, when he looks at food and when he's had enough food he'll completely stop, the fork will go down and nothing I can say will make him pick that fork back up, so I'll often say you know you must eat your, your vegetables first because I don't want you to stop when it comes to the, the meat and the, the Yorkshire puddings. If he's had his vegetables first and he fills up on those, that was the, the point of putting the four vegetables on his plate that day. Um, you know, he, he rarely goes back for more. He doesn't want a chocolate or a pudding afterwards because he's had you know, a sufficient portion to, to keep him and he doesn't want any more. And like you said, you know, many times that's the way growing up we behave because that is the way our body is trained to behave. It's when you get to the point where you can have that food and you can have those portions, you just keep finding yourself having more and more.